Um, you don't make profit when you sell. You make profit when you acquire. And your expectations that surround that have a lot to do with knowing what it is that you're trading rather than not. Are we waiting for Shawnee? We're good to go. So uh, let's get started. So today is uh, October 22nd, 2020. And welcome to this week's uh, Vindo with Robert Hollinshead. And every week, one of the, the root themes that we talk about during the Vindo call is determining, just as Bob said, a vehicle's pedigree so we can better acquire inventory. And today, we're kind of going to start diving into the OBD2 port and how to get an even clearer view into a VIN's pedigree. And happily joined by the CEO of VIN Logic, Keith McCord. Keith, welcome to the Vindo with Robert Holmeshead. Thank you. Pleasure to be here. So let me just lead so, into this, uh, just if you if you don't mind, Sean, because our time's going to be short with only a half an hour, um, and why I think it's an important uh, introduction uh, with this integration into AccuTrade. Um, you know, it, what's always been a mysterious thing is how, um, when a car is being traded, the magic of a, the appraiser somehow or other is able to look at a car and understand what is good or bad paint work wise mechanically wise and then do their hocus pocus with what they want to put on the car to trade it one of the biggest problems that everyone it's unfortunately nobody can um, actually deny it is you can only guess about the electronic and the mechanical health of the car right so we can identify previous paint work and what the existing reconditioning needs to be and our tool obviously helps you know, dramatically to quantify that, to put it in the process, in a platform where a consumer and a salesperson can have logical conversation. Um, we chose um, um, uh, VinLogics to integrate into our tool to actually go a step further. And Keith, being a, a scientific genius, uh, and I, I don't mean that to, as a mutual admiration uh, uh, thing, uh, I, we've been working together a little bit and I think we've identified that the the product actually matches the intellect in that um, it's as close to your snap-on uh, OBD in your shop as anything is going to be and instantaneously while you're appraising the car we actually create a report that um, matches the fin specific health the EKG of the vehicle what that does is it it reveals you know a catalytic converter or a, a um, an ABS light that's been turned off uh, five starts ago or three days ago or 28 miles ago, so that you're not trading a cat to be a dog. You follow me? So in other words, we're actually digging into the actual live health of the vehicle, um, so that we don't trade cars that. We always talk about the shit eating grin of the sales manager or the service manager coming around the corner saying, Hey guys, you look like you got a nice car there. It looks like it'll take about thirty five hundred to put it on the front line. You want us to do the work or button her up, right? So there's not a new car dealer in the world that doesn't go through that on a regular basis. It just doesn't happen. And we actually now are able to mitigate that because at the point of attack where the profit actually is made by trading a car to be what it's supposed to be, not what you think it might could be, but it turns out not to be by plugging it in, walking the car, vindicating, walking the car, snapping your pictures. We've actually created the ultimate condition report, the ultimate appraisal um, that leads to logical conversation uh, with the consumer to treat a car to be what it's supposed to be. It doesn't mean that you can't override it, but you can't deny the facts. With that, I'm going to introduce uh, Keith, who um, has a very interesting background and has uh, poured all of his uh, scientific knowledge into the tool that I think is going to be a little bit of a disruptor, not only in the showroom, but that follows then through to when a dealer's acquiring cars to actually have the tool to plug it in and see what the car is worth, but simultaneously the mechanical health of the car. Keith, could you introduce yourself to our audience, please? Sure, sure. My name is Keith McCord, uh, CEO of VinLogic. Uh, we actually have introduced with Bob uh, a product which is called Vintel, which we designed it so that we knew in the automotive world, most used car managers know very little about a car. Shoot, most of them don't even own a wrench. So what we struck out to do was to be able to break down the hocus pocus magic black boxes in a vehicle 
to where all you do is you plug it in while you're doing your walk around a car. It does its magic in well under a minute. And it integrates then a report that a layman can understand. So it goes from a very high level uh, interest in a car, if that's all you're looking for, all the way down to if you're sending it out to your shop or your service lane, and you could still get information on there, what's wrong, details with the car. So our focus really was to make a tool that was very easy, very agnostic. We do both the, what we call generic test, as well as the snap-on level test, specifically detailed for each OEM. So we go all the way down to that level. We don't compete against snap-on because we're not trying to repair cars. We don't compete against the OEM's tools in the shop, so we don't repair cars. What we try to do is to give you a way to look mechanically at the car, just like you do with your eyes when you're looking at paint and dents and wheel curbs. What we're doing is we're making the insides of the car, the X-ray, the EKG, available to laymen. So you can use that now to help value that particular VIN. What is the exact issue with that car? Or is it a clean car? And you don't have to worry about it. We catch fraud. We catch turned off codes, like Bob said. We catch the guy who ran down to AutoZone, cleared the car, and limped it over the dealer, so he's trying to hide things. That all gets caught. That all gets exposed. We don't tell you if it's a good car or a bad car. That's not our intent. What we do is we give you the information that now you can make that determination. Do you want to take this car? Do you want to walk from the car? Do you want to wholesale it? Do you want to retail it? That's really what we designed the whole product for. And that's coming out of an entire automotive background. Everybody in our company came out of the automotive world, whether it's uh, working for GM, uh, whether it's building large database systems, whether it is working on things that are as small as just piece parts. So we really built the tool with our knowledge, understanding cars are very complicated and they're getting worse. They're getting more and more expensive, especially we're an associate member with the NAAA. So we're having them help us decide what do these things mean to the value of a car, whether it be retail or on the wholesale side. So realistically, in a nutshell, that's what we built the tool for. We built it so we can integrate, and, and Bob is one of the first people that we really latched on to from the, from the retail side. We're heavy in the auction side. But from the retail side, it was just such a great fit. That's what we've been working on, getting it in there and integrated directly into the uh, AccuTrade appraisal tools. So let me just add to that, Keith, because what you said is all obviously 100% accurate, but, you know, our tools built to ride through the the journey of of the in play uh, 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 lifespan of a vin of a vin right. So obviously one piece of profit compression is mistrading cars based on lack of knowledge of the of the actual um, mechanic and electronic health of the vehicle right. So you know most dealers are relatively efficient at trading a car, but they have no um, supernatural power to understand the, the rest of the car, right? So that's part of it at the showroom level, right? The next is at the service drive level, right? Identifying opportunities where, you know, we don't overlook a car that might not be good for retail, could be perfectly good for wholesale and having the knowledge of communication with a consumer and a report, not just a conversation, but a platform that acknowledges, you know, the value and then what would the, uh, let's call it the, um, diminish the value based on its uh, physical and mechanical condition, right? So we're not talking about things that we can't refer to in terms of fact, right? So fact-based communication typically leads to a logical conclusion as opposed to a argumentum ad hominem where we're screaming at each other. And that never leads to a uh, 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 a beneficial end for the buyer or the seller, right? And then it leads to the next piece. So if it's in the showroom uh, and then in the service drive and then in the acquisition realm, right? Everybody, there's very few dealers that don't buy or sell cars at the wholesale level. Uh, some only sell trash and those cars may go to an auction. But um, um, part of what uh, this process is about is enabling auctions to actually um, not to not sell the cars, but to know what they're selling to mitigate arbitration. Since we're moving towards a, I don't think anybody's ever going to disagree with the fact, uh, even though I'd like to disagree with my own fact, because we love selling cars on an auction block to a couple thousand bidders that are standing there next to the cars sucking the fumes. But the reality is we're selling today and tomorrow six or 700 cars on an auction block that doesn't have any people in it. We're selling them on simulcast, right? So um, when people buy or sell, their expectations are based on 
you know, what gets revealed that may or may not be relevant in terms of what's arbitratable, right? So if this process actually begins in the beginning as opposed to the middle of the in-play process, right, before you bring it to the auction, you know what to anticipate, you know how to properly announce your vehicle um, so that it's aligned with the um, the correct category of buyer. Anybody will buy a car that has lights on, but it's just not a new car dealer that's only looking for a car that goes directly on a front line after a quick little spiff and they changed the oil and did the tires. Now they certify, et cetera, right? We're not the, 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 the buyer for that particular car that has three lights on and uh, uh, have various potentially mechanical uh, difficult problems for a new car dealer to resolve obviously goes to a more adept, uh, uh, more agile uh, reconditioning expert, which would be a, a non-franchise dealer that actually does this for a living and they know how to overcome issues. So at the wholesale level, this becomes a, uh, for a buyer and a seller, it becomes a, I think, uh, what I believe is going to be an integral part of what those 30 or 40,000 people actually will be able to leverage the tool set uh, to enable valuation, uh, logical understanding of the history of the listing of the vehicle, right? Where it came from, what we call the pedigree. And part of the current pedigree of that vehicle is its health, right? And it's not guesswork. I think I hear a noise. It could be something. No, no. Um, uh, using the tool and the report that's generated inside of AccuTrade, uh, it's all part of a really simple process. When you t Just like you can look at your Carfax or AutoCheck, you can now look at your Vintel report that is undemiable. Now, that doesn't mean you can't fix the ABS and you can't fix a, you know, a, uh, uh, an SRS light because of a who knows what, some airbag, something, whatever. It doesn't mean you can't. So you can modify it and rerun it and it won't show. But in the meantime, uh, when you bought a car and you want to have a, 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 a rational arbitration conversation with the, the widget and the platform, um, it enables it where arguments become a thing of the past. You can't even argue it if it is a fact. You can't say that it's not on or it didn't break or it's not broken because it is. Now all we have to do is find out how much we're going to adjust to keep a deal together. Does that make sense to you, uh, Shawnee? And did I explain yeah, it correctly really? from your perspective, Keith? Yeah, and, and one of the things that we see, you talk about that, we're working with NAAA. For cars that do have the three lights on, bad timing chain, very expensive fixes, Instead of people turning their nose up and walking away from it, uh, working with the NAAA, we're starting to be able to let the auctions filter down to that. So show cars for people who may own a transmission shop and are looking to flip the car. They can buy a reasonable, put some money into it. Now they're going to bring back a better car. So it's really having people understand from the time the trade is initiated what you're really getting. We're not saying good car, bad car. We built the tools so you plug it in. You walk away, you don't have to push buttons or anything. You're going to get a report on that vehicle, which tells you what is going on inside. You can make the right. decision after that. And that's, that's and how that, we want the market to work. Exactly. And that in conjunction with rational pricing that happens to be insured, the conversation with the consumer, right? It, it becomes, um, I think, a... That's why we call it a window. It's a window into the, the information that surrounds a VIN, right? So it's a it's a way to actually see clearly what otherwise uh, it remains very murky, and um, 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 I would say a conversation that is not based in fact. It's a it's it's based in what we've been doing since the beginning of time. We're just enabling a different level of transparency and transactability that uh, I think will help dealers uh, not make, listen, probably a bunch of guys are going to, guys and girls are going to listen. Is, oh, we, don't, we don't have to listen. To that. We know how to get around that. That's true, except it really isn't true. In other words, if you're able to leverage uh, um, a process and product in order to make a better uh, conversation and a better decision, how not to overtrade a car by 12 or 1500 bucks uh, um, because you're able to converse with facts with the consumer to use the logic of um, your offer, um, you're starting at a point where the probability of being able to fix it, keep it for retail and sell it is greater. And more, more importantly, if it's a car that doesn't match your um, um, the middle of the bell curve meet 
for retail, you can slug it into a marketplace that actually will create uh, what I believe to be a retail profit wholesale. Rather than switching dollars, um, you're gonna you're gonna own a vehicle for what you can actually knock off twelve or fifteen bucks in the uh, um, um, uh, auction or uh, online platform marketplaces. Does that sound like it's logical to you, Shawnee? Being an auction well, owner. Just think it- And running a whole bunch of VHRs every week. So the question I would have, Keith, uh, right off the top of my head is one of the challenges we always see with running so many history reports is you'll get odometer discrepancies on reports because it went through a garage and they collected the data and it was showing, you know, X amount of uh, mileage on it. And then the next time it goes through a different shop, it's got, you know, less. So will it catch those uh, true mileage on known vehicles without having to open up a case? which we always do every single week with the uh, history report companies. Sure, and and that's a great question. We are just now introducing mileage. You would not believe how difficult it is to get mileage. They all hide it in different spots. We're rolling that out with our latest updates. Um, Remember, we're not making a decision on whether that's good mileage or bad mileage. We're reporting on what the vehicle is. Now, that being said, we save a lot of the the mistakes where people read it in kilometers instead of miles because they had to dash flip or they read the trip odometer instead of the real odometer. So that type of information we we can catch, for instance, um, with our partners that we have at the auctions like IAS, we can give them that mileage. They can compare that against what the car was checked in and immediately flag it and say, whoa, 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 we got a discrepancy. Better go find out what it is. The same with the dealership, they can look at it. We're reading a car, so we're the ultimate authority of what the car says. Now, we can't tell you if the car was hacked. There's a lot of Mercedes things out there that you can plug in and it changes the dashboard. We can show that's a discrepancy. We can say something isn't right, but we we are only telling you what the car says it knows. That's all we can do. So Got basically it. memorializing yeah. the, the current pedigree of the vehicle. In other words, uh, what the facts are about that car. Someone's touching it at that point, you know, mechanically and physically. So we've memorialized exactly what it is. Um, to, to, to your point, Sean, that obviously then remains in our data set surrounding that VIN. So over the next month, year, two years, five years, um, there is a, uh, a a reference point of someone physically um, uh, and uh, mechanically actually absorbing that information that stays uh, in the pedigree of that, v- of that VIN. And especially as we integrate into the service lanes. So if every time Sally comes in to get her car oil changed, it gets plugged in as a complimentary uh, AccuTrade appraisal. And now we've logged that. So we've put a pin in time that says we read this. Here's the status of the car. We're developing that pedigree. So if suddenly it comes back into service lane or shows up at an auction and it's 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 40,000 miles less, oh, we got an issue. It's That's not a fat finger typing issue. That's something on that car's changed. Now, maybe they had a an accident and they took out the, the instrument cluster and they had to put a new one in. And they don't typically, a lot of times, will change that. So there'll be a notation on the title that the, the true mileage is different. So, But we back that all up because what Bob's describing as a pedigree is that that follows that car throughout its life. It's kind of like having your medical jacket without all the HIPAA restrictions. So you can go back and look at what that car looked like, how many years ago, what it looks like today. At auctions, we see a difference from sabotage just from when it was scanned at the gate to the time it was post-sale because somebody unplugged coil wires to make the car chug, chug, chug as it went through the lane so no one would bid on it. We see all that, we log it, and we can detect that. And and the reference to the service uh, line over you know the first check second third fourth service thing, you simultaneously we're we're capturing the health of the vehicle, but the valuation change over that time also. So uh, that that also uh, actually is memorialized against that VIN, so the user can actually see what it is, what it's been, and uh, let's call it the cross reference to what's owed to understand when would be the optimal time to make a logical and a uh, an amiable offer to trade or pull them out of a lease, uh, you know, 10 months early or whatever it might be. So that's all part of the process. In other words, uh, um, it's it's not like a, uh, let's say, a thing that just happens. You're in an emergency, try to figure out what it is at that moment, uh, like we have been doing all of our lives. It's a continuum. It's a 
begins in the beginning and it ends when it's gone uh, into the trash can. You follow me? So a dealer is able to uh, leverage it throughout the life of the vehicle and maintain that conversation possibility with their with their customer base. And one of I hope the things that makes that we sense did, to you, Sean. What we did was when we designed this setup, we knew that we had to design this so we could accommodate the lowest common denominator. And that is your minimum wage, high turnover, a porter, or at the auctions, people who are drivers, et cetera. So realistically, all you have to do to train them is here's the module. You turn the key on or start the car and you plug it in. This is what the OBD port looks like. That's all we do. So what we're doing is we're, we're really encouraging anyone and everyone to have that in their pocket and scan the car as often as possible because every time you do, it narrows down on the actual valuation of the vehicle because it builds and builds and builds that health report. And that's really the goal is that we've got a specific VIN valuation for that specific car. And, and that's better than anything out there, better than any books, et cetera. They were really getting to the heart of that vehicle. Okay, so any AccuTrade user um, has access to this integration or is that coming down the pipeline or? No, if you look at your AccuTrade tool now, um, the placeholders is there. When you subscribe to Vintel, um, you actually get two things. What One is obviously the capability of using it 60 times that day. But simultaneously, the data that has been scanned previously at any other user, it actually shows up just like we use it with a bad auto check, let's say, and it turns up red. If you have an auto check account, we'll show you that what that is. If not, you just know that it's not got a good auto check, right? Um, and the same thing would be here. If you have a, uh, a vehicle that turns out that someone has scanned and has an arbitratable item, the dealer would be able to see it. The only way they're actually going to dig into it is just like with any history report. Uh, when you subscribe to it, you can actually see specifically what it is. Uh, so the integration is that we show it um, um, to anybody that uh, would have the inclination to understand what the health of the vehicle is. I think when dealers uh, use it one or two times, uh, they'll understand the um, Again, it's, I started the conversation off with uh, mitigating profit compression. And when we actually really do a, uh, a, a little deeper thought about the cars that you've gotten crushed on in the past, the vast majority of them weren't necessarily on your instinct as much as they were with surprise attacks. Surprise attacks being you know, a rebate you didn't know about on a lead model car, for instance. You can crush yourself on that because logic told you the car was worth it. You find out that it wasn't because they got some kind of goofy stair step on something and it's it's no good. Uh, uh, or something mechanical or electrical, right? So you're a wholesaler and you're buying cars and you get at the block and find out it's got a, uh, you know, an airbag uh, issue that, uh, in other words, you otherwise wouldn't have known about. Now you're getting crushed in, in post sales. Somebody wants to knock your brains out. Uh, uh, because of that, Sean, you understand that perfectly in, in, in your arbitration circumstances, right? But let me ask you a question, a little surprise attack that's not preordained here, right? Um, what percentage of arbitrations are based on mechanical or electrical issues, non-physical, visible issues uh, at your auction, Sean? Give us the percentage. Come on, let's go. Two-thirds. Two-thirds, see? Now, what, what of those two-thirds of items... How many of those would have been resolved if when checking that car in or if a dealer is using AccuTrade bringing the cars to your auction, which I think a good number of them are, uh, they would already know what those issues are uh, prior to running the car across the block. Uh, because you, you are letting people in your lanes. If those same dealers had uh, the dongle with them, uh, they would also know prior to bidding on cars uh, um, um, what they anticipate. The, the beauty of that is, it's not going to stop the cars from selling. It's going to be, it's going to enable the buyer, buyers w that, that have more transparency, pay more for cars. It's the mystery that stops people from bidding that makes a car bring less. I can only tell you tens of thousands of times we've experienced. The more you tell about the car, the more it brings. In other words, the more you disclose, the more the car brings. It's no different than bringing cars in on the back of a a flatbed. They bring more money on the back of a flatbed than they do uh, 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 driving through the lane in many instances because the assumption is you're attracting the right buyer for that vehicle 
that thinks that he's going to be able to put sweat equity in it to bring it back to life and have an opportunity to buy a car worth some money. And Did you ever see that too, happen, Shawnee? Yes, sir. Well, yes, one sir. of the things, too, Sean, is that when we have an auction that uses our tools along with local dealers that they do, it really brings them to the table to talk in a common language because the dealers are using the report to do the trading valuations. And in fact, dealers are using it as a Carfax report when selling a used car. Here's our complimentary health check. We can go through it with you if you want. Now, so it, it gets them that confidence. But when the auction and the dealer are using the same tool, the same report, now suddenly they're at the table talking the same language. So you can say, I looked on the Vintel report. We see this, this, this is an arbitratable. What do you want to do? Do you want to as is? Do you want us to fix it, recon it? Do you want to try to green light it and roll the dice? But you're all talking the common language. And that alone has been very successful because it's brought them all talking to the same report. There's no see, see, Keith, you, you just said it. You just said it. I was just writing a, a thing that, you know, why does the scientific uh, community all use English as the common language <clears throat> in China, in South America, in uh, India? It, it, it's used as the common language so that everyone can communicate about a certain thing. It's kind of like a railroad track that, that started as the width of a horse's ass in, in Europe. Uh, because they're the pathways that were beaten, right? So it's a common track that all locomotives are built on so they can all go to In our industry, there is no common track. Everybody has their own variation. I'm saying this enables a common track for all buyers and sellers, retail and wholesale, to be able to communicate in a way that is uh, based in uh, logic, fact, and verifiable information. Yep. Yeah, if you can't measure it, it becomes political, doesn't it? So, I, you know what? Yeah. I I would love to see this product in the hands of the dealers, uh, any dealerships out there when they're starting to acquire, um, especially right at the the time of trade, because that's when uh, you know, as Bob says, it begins in the beginning, and there's no more beginning than when you're acquiring a trade. And so, um, yeah. if we can have that figured out, and what I'd like to do is maybe we can pop up a video or something of how it's uh, how it will look inside of AccuTrade so people can understand that. Yeah, we have too. that now, Sean. So we'll In other that. words, we have it now. So Perfect. we can send it over and you can send it out to your to all AccuTrade subscribers or potential users. And um, we can send those uh, things over. So whoever's interested uh, will be able to contact you and we'll send it out to them. And obviously the, the widgets are available now. So uh, uh, we can send them out to dealerships to, uh, um, to put it into action. Um, I would be thoroughly shocked that if uh, if they're using the platform, uh, they don't get a, a 50 times ROI only because they're going to know before they go uh, what they're doing. They're going to know what they're buying. They're going to know what they're selling. And uh, that can only lead to less, uh, uh, I would call it, tragic mistakes uh, uh, with things that you didn't understand when you were writing a check. Uh, I, Can't I afford can, to make a mistake. I mm -hmm. can give you people who are using it, who have been using it, and the dealers will tell you every month they save between five and $7,000 just on bad trades, and they won't blink an eye at that number. Yep. One, wow, that's huge. That's wonderful. That's that's the type of information that uh, dealer, every dealership needs. Um, that's great. Uh, we're kind of closing up at the end of time, so oh, I really want to thank Keith for joining us today. That was a really good conversation. Um, Thank you for next me. week, we're going to kind of dive into uh, private party acquisition. So buying off of the uh, classified sites like Kijiji up here, Craigslist, et cetera, et cetera. And ideally, uh, Bob, do we got uh, maybe a special guest next week or how are we? Yeah, we do. We're going to have the guy who started the uh, van uh, um, vehicle acquisition network. Uh, I think we're going to be able to have Greg on. And I think what that will lead to is – uh, helping a lot of uh, AccuTrade users also that, you know, not everybody because not everybody's an aggressive buyer, uh, but how that platform is going to help them acquire cars out of people's garages. And I don't think anybody uh, will deny that the ultimate car is really not even a trade in. It's a car that you're yanking out of somebody's garage that it's one car too many or whatever it might be. Um, uh, they're the best cars that you could possibly acquire. Cars with pedigree. Mate. Mm -hmm. And maybe I can prompt you to tell how you used to uh, walk around with the newspaper buying cars when you first started. Oh, absolutely. Uh, been a great, 70, great story sure. to tell. Yep. Yes, sir. Yep. 
thank thank you everyone for joining that was great we're going to package this up and get it out to everyone again and if anybody has any information just reach out to any one on the accutrade team thanks everybody talks next thanks, week Keith. buy rate to sell rate see you guys. you guys and girls have fun